What's up guys? So today I'm going to be doing a quick review of the Hobart Stickmate. This is the model that has AC and DC power. They sell two different models. One of the models is only AC and then the other model has DC positive and negative. Now the one that only has AC that costs about 300 bucks around there. This one that has DC2, I paid 450 for it, but I've seen them as much as like $500. But just some word of advice, spend the extra money and get the one with DC. It's a whole lot easier to weld with DC. Just spend the money, it's a lot better machine. Basics of this machine, it weighs about 100 pounds and it's pretty small, it's about a foot wide, maybe about a foot and a half tall, but it's solid, it's heavy. So you for sure have to get a cart with it. And you got your AC power, DC plus, DC minus. This is your on button. This you just switch back and forth. Down here you have the amps. If you run DC amps, it's the white one. It could go up to 160. If you run AC, it could go up to 170. Or actually, AC goes 230. I never go AC. I always use DC. Um, I run mostly eighth inch stick rod, and you're never really gonna need to go up to 160. Maybe with uh, 530 seconds, but very rarely. But this nozzle, you just twist it. This, I really don't like this on the machine. It's kind of difficult to turn and it's kind of hard to get the amp set right. But, and it does have a plastic handle that feels chintzy. But like I said, it's, it's not the top dog machine, you know. This has two leads. It has the electrode lead and the ground lead. And these things, this is the ground it comes with. And this thing is just cheap junk. Don't even use it. As you can see, it's just stamped steel. It's garbage. Just throw it out. Get yourself, invest in a better clamp. You're gonna get a lot better grounds with this. The Electro Lead, this one's actually pretty decent. I'm happy with it. It's not the greatest one in the world, but it's not too bad. But one concern I have, this ground lead it's really short. It's maybe 10 feet, if that. That would be one of my main concerns with this. The leads are just way too short. You can't really do much with it. And plus the power cord. This is 6 feet maybe. So, if you need to do long range welding, I would get new leads. I'm not sure if these leads could be changed out. I'm sure they could, but that's my main complaint for this machine. All right, so now we'll fire it up. Just click this up. So it's pretty quiet. It's not loud at all. It's just a slight hum. So in my opinion, this machine is probably the best machine you could get for the lower price range. I mean, it's only $450 and it definitely holds up. I run the crap out of it. It never fails me. It has a really smooth arc. And compared to the other ones in the price range, you know, you could get maybe a, a Lincoln Tombstone for 300 bucks, And that thing, in my opinion, is garbage. Or you could go to Harbor Freight and get a piece of junk one. So obviously it's not the best welder in the world, but for the, it's the best mid-range price tag welder you could get, in my opinion. So now we'll, uh, we'll run some beads and see how it runs. Alright, so now we're going to run some beads. We're going to be using 8th inch 7018 on some, looks like quarter inch steel. So we'll see how it goes.
you strike an arc, it strikes relatively quickly. Uh, I definitely usually do a, a scratch and then it takes a little bit to start up, but not too bad. As you can see, it lays a nice bead. And it's a very smooth arc. Burns in good. Looks great. Nice machine. And you could tell it wasn't that loud running either. I could barely hear it. So if you guys need a, a mid-range welder for you know homework, I do this for uh, side work too. As long as you're not going to kill it, like use it constantly, this is the perfect machine to get.